Hey, welcome back to Windy City Live. Well, he sees dead people literally. He is one of America's top psychic mediums, a best-selling author, and the star of Meet the Frasers on E! We are joined by Matt Frazier. Great to see you, Matt. Thank you. It's great to be here with you. Yeah, Matt, first, I love your outfit. Oh, thank, doesn't it look like I came down from heaven? Yes! <laughs> and, and it turns out that you can talk to people in heaven or on the other side. Tell us about this gift and how it all started. Yeah, so I'm actually a psychic medium and the gift started with my grandmother who had this gift to pass it on to my mom and then in turn pass it on to me. But you gotta remember that back in the day, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, nobody talked about this. Nobody talked about being psychic or connecting with the other side. But then when I was growing up, I began seeing and hearing the departed at just three, four, five years old. I literally, was like that little boy from The Sixth Sense. That's how I grew up. So when you first heard from the other side at that young of an age, what was your initial reaction? Oh my God, I was petrified, petrified. Like literally, I think I tried to sleep with my parents till I was 13 because I was so afraid of what I was seeing, hearing and experiencing. And the more that I tried to push the voices away and the more that I tried to you know, uh, push the spirits away, the louder and stronger they became. It was almost like being in a movie that you couldn't get out of. And it's crazy because my mom tried to calm me down. She tried to get me to talk about this. But being so young, I just wanted to be normal. I didn't want to hear them. I didn't want to see them. I just wanted this all to go away. Do right, you of course, hear them more than you see them? No, I see them. Yeah, okay. Now, there's a lot of skeptics out there. And uh, I do think that people have abilities. But I do think there are some fakes out there. Uh, so we'll get to that in a second. But first off, what do these people look like? The spirits, how clear are they? Do they have bodies like we do? Well, first of all, I love the skeptical ones. That's my favorite thing because I think that everybody walks in as skeptic because people are wondering, you know, is this real? Is there another side? Is, is there a heaven? You know, can somebody really speak to the dead? And I love it when those people come to my events because most times it's the skeptics who get a reading and then it's absolutely shocking to them because it really makes them rethink, oh my God, you know, my loved ones are here and this is real and my loved ones are with me. So I love that. I love it when somebody who doesn't believe gets a reading because I think it changes their whole world and it shows them, yes, there is life after death. Have you ever heard from the other side or from someone from the other side who told you something that you just, it just pained you to be able to tell the person? On Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I wrote my book is that I wanted to talk about the situations that I don't always get to speak about. Because being a medium, you're a messenger. And sometimes there's things I don't want to tell my clients. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes uh, some, they think that somebody passed of, you know, a suicide, but really it was something else that had happened. Or, you know, maybe it was just the opposite. Maybe someone passed one way, but it, they passed it a different way. So literally, when I'm delivering these messages, my mom always taught me one thing. She says, you know, throughout life, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. That if you're going to help somebody, you have to speak from the heart, speak from your soul. She says, and you can't go wrong. You just have to tell the truth. And that's what I do. All right, so when heaven calls the name of the book, and that's out now. Yes, you, this is it. You have the reality show as well, where they follow your life. And you're seeing a lot of readings on camera. And when you see these people, do you see them like they looked like in the physical world or did uh, the spirits look different? No, they look different. Definitely. So the way that it works for me is that you're going to understand that when I'm connecting with the other side, it's very different than, you know, the way that we're communicating right now. What I'll do is I'll see them in an instant. And then next thing you know, I'll hear names, dates, and, you know, different things about their passing. Like, for example, when I'm looking at you and Val right now, Val, your grandmother's right behind you. Oh, is very she and I also have a soul that's coming through that passed of Alzheimer's here in the physical world. So whether Alzheimer's or dementia that departed. That would be, I, maybe that would be Mother Dear. That would have been what? Mother Dear, my grandmother. Oh, okay. Oh, Mother Dear. She's stepping forward because when I kept hearing, this is how it happened. I saw her sitting behind you and the next thing you know, I kept hearing that there was issues with her memory here in this world. And she keeps saying that the one thing that she wants you all to know is that she remembers, she remembers because she's acknowledging that to me. And when I was connecting with her, she was very motherly here in the physical, but she had many problems throughout her body when she was here. She actually talks about the fact that at the end, that she was bedridden, that she couldn't communicate at the end. Do you understand that? The very end, yeah. 
And she's acknowledging this because everybody had to rush to come and see her. And she's thanking all of you for getting everyone together to see her and to say goodbye to her here in this world. Because she's acknowledging that. She's also telling me happy birthday. Whose birthday is it? Her birthday is this weekend. So Shut the hell up! She oh my God. saying happy birthday to herself. Who knows? <laughs> That's what it is. No, because anytime I keep hearing happy birthday in my ear, it's their way of acknowledging they're with us on that special day. So if your family is celebrating your grandmother's birthday this weekend, know it's her way of acknowledging that she is right there because she's bringing that through. And her, she's remembering of you when you were just a little girl here in this world. She loved those times with you when I'm connecting with her. Hmm. And more importantly, do, do you remember spending time with your grandmother when you were younger? Well, I lived in California and she was here in Illinois. So we didn't spend a ton together just except for family visits. But that's what I'm talking about because you got to remember that souls still are with you and she's with you every day. And she remembers you of when you were just a little girl here in this world and the time that she got to spend with you when she was here. And she says, I need my family to know that I do have my memory back, that I am okay. And that more importantly, that she is with all of you. She does tell me that before her passing, there was a fall that happened. Do you remember the fall? Uh-huh. Because she says to me, I knew that when I fell, that I was destined to leave this world. Mm. She says, I was never right after that fall. And she, she says to me that at the end, that, there was, that she had to go into assisted living or there was some type of a, um, of a rehabilitation center that she had to go in. Yeah. And she says, I was never able to go back to my house. She says, I was never able to be independent. She says, but I want to let my family know that I am safe and at peace on the other side and I can walk and I can move and that I am now fine. Because she says to me that there was so much hurt and so much stress that your, that your family carries because they had to put her away or they had to have her in that place of assisted living. Do you understand that? Yes, 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 yes. But she's acknowledging and letting you know, listen, that's all behind me. She goes, I can walk, I can move. And I got to tell you something else. Your grandmother tells me that she hid her illness. She tells me she was sick for quite some time and she wasn't telling anybody. And she wasn't acknowledging what was going on with her. Yeah, because I was not, when you said that she had been ill, she was pretty healthy up until the fall. The fall is what I think did her in. Well, listen, this is why people come to me is that sometimes we think we know what happened with the person, but with your grandmother, even though she looked healthy, she tells me that she wasn't feeling good for quite some time. And she says, I didn't want to say anything. I didn't want to talk about it. And then she kept telling me she would have all of these dizzy spells and this vertigo that would come in. And that's what caused her to fall here in this world because she's acknowledging that. Wow. And she says, I want you to know that the moment that I fell, she goes, I knew that I didn't have long left. But she's thanking everybody for the way that, that they came to rush to say goodbye to her and to see her. Because she says it gave me the moments to say goodbye. And that's what she's bringing through. Right. Well, she lived about three years after the fall. But she lived in the assisted living home. That's after. what I'm talking about. You're going to know that when I'm connecting with spirit, everything that happens within their life, they show me in a few short seconds. So when I'm connecting with your grandma, the way that I'm getting the information is I'm saying, what happened? She goes, well, I was sick. I didn't talk about it. Then I fell. The next thing you know, she moved into assisted living. She kept talking about her house. She wanted to come back home. Her family was telling her she was going to be able to come back home and she wasn't able to. And then she shows me everybody coming, rushing down to say goodbye to her because they knew she was passing. And then she went to the other side. That's how I see it. And that's how they communicate with me. They literally tell me the story of their passing and what had happened. How and is she behaving on the other side? Because she was quite feisty. <laughs> well, she's still feisty when I'm connecting with her because this woman had a larger than life personality when I'm speaking to her here. And when I'm connecting, she says the one thing that she hated about assisted living is that she couldn't get dressed up anymore. She used to love to dress up here in this world. And she's acknowledging that speaking to her. Yeah, I'm looking over at my daughter who's on the floor listening to this going, <laughs> does she have any boyfriends over on the other side <laughs> i'm not speaking to that don't hold me accountable for that one. Oh no it's that there was probably public knowledge she's flirting with jesus <laughs> well you know what i do also see that there also is a baby that's there that's on the other side that's with her so there was a miscarriage or a soul that didn't make it that's also with your grandmother do you know about that no. She's showing me this child within their arms. Anytime a, a soul, uh, anytime a spirit shows me a child within their arms, it's a soul that didn't make it or a soul that had departed. So souls will come through that past of miscarriage, terminations, anything, anything like that will still be on the other side. Well, I know my mother had a miscarriage before me. Maybe Hello, she pay attention. Her. Yes. <laughs> Hello, pay attention. But we never talk about it. Well, I don't care if you don't talk about it. Those souls are still with you. But mm -hmm. your grandmother says to me that this is one of the reasons why she's so proud of you and watching over you is because she can see everything that you're doing from the other side. And even though, even though your grandmother was distant from you, she can see every single thing that happened within your life. 
And she's acknowledging that everything that you went through in life, she was all, always able to see because your family always kept her up to speed. And she talks about the phone calls and about always on the phone with them and talking to them. They would even send her pictures or show her pictures of things that you were doing within your life. And she says, you know, even though I wasn't always right there physically with you, she goes, I always saw everything that was going on with you. She says, and it's the same thing in heaven. And she's acknowledging that. Hmm. All right, Matt, look onto this living room. See what you're seeing over here. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a second. I gotta change gears here. Cause when you're all on this on the Zoom call, I can't just pick who's gonna come through. There's all different souls that will step forward into and, and speak. And right away when I connect, right away when I'm connecting you, Ryan, I'm pretty sure it's with you. I have a soul that's stepping forward that tells me they passed a suicide here in this world. Who's a part of the suicide? Yeah, I lost a brother that way. Okay, so know that this is your brother's way of acknowledging that he's here. And I have to stop for a minute when I do these because all of your souls are speaking all at, all at one time. So when I stop, what I'm doing is I'm saying, okay, everybody step back and who's ever here for Ryan, step forward. And then right away, I have the soul that's here that's telling me that's whispering suicide. This is your brother's way of acknowledging that he's here and that he's stepping forward. And he keeps saying to me, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry when I'm connecting with him. Your brother tells me that the first thing that he wants you to know is that he's sorry for everything that had happened within his life here in this world because your family was trying to help him, he tells me, and your family was trying to bring him to different doctors or get him to see different people here in this world. And he tells me, I blamed everybody else except for myself. He says, and your family is so upset because they feel as though that they trusted doctors and nurses and people within your brother's care. But then at the end, they feel like that they let him, they let him down because he didn't make it. But your brother says to me, do you wanna know everything? Yeah, yeah. Your brother was telling me he did not take his medication the way that he was supposed to. And yeah, he, he wouldn't take he wouldn't take medication. That was pretty much he was pretty uh, pretty against all of that stuff. That would be why because he shows me he was prescribed medication or he was supposed to be on medication. Well, and yeah, I mean he he never he saw somebody maybe once or twice. He wasn't really even open to seeing professional help. That was the that was the major issue. Oh, I know because he tells me that your your family was persistent. And he shows me your family was bringing him back and forth to doctors and bringing him to different people trying to get him help. And this is why he's coming through. Because your brother says to me that your family is so upset because they feel they could have prevented this. Because they brought him to help. They tried to get him help. But he says to me, he refused to take medication. He showed me that he wasn't taking medication the way that he should have been. And more importantly, he says to me, I was pushing everybody out of my life. He says, and the only person that I blame now is myself because I know that my family could have helped me. You know, he tells me that his, the way that he died was because of his thoughts. He tells me his thoughts used to haunt him, him every single day. He tells me that he never slept. When I'm connecting with him, he'd be up like all hours of the night. He's showing me that there was, a, he, he would have a very hard time slowing his thoughts down. And he says to me, I just want you to know and understand that I love all of you and that I didn't do this because I was unhappy with any of you. He says, I did this because this was something that was in my own thoughts. And this is what I'm talking about, that souls will come through and talk about the way that they've died. And with your brother, this was something that we're still wondering what caused him to do what he did, what caused him to pass. And he said, it wasn't anything to do with any of you. It had to do with his own thoughts. He says, it just became overwhelming. He says, I felt like I couldn't live a normal life because every day my thoughts would just boggle me down. And he's mm. acknowledging that. Mm. But he's found peace on that side. He is, and he's with you all the time. Because when I went to look over and I asked everyone to step away, your brother was right next to you and he kept whispering suicide in my ear. And this is his way of letting you know that he loves you, he cares about you, and that he is with you every single day. Because he's acknowledging that. Yeah, now of course, I wanna, I wanna believe that and I, I hope that that is a thousand percent true. But some people would say, well, you could Google that now because that's become public knowledge and part of my story. So what do you say to that? I don't even know who you are before I came on this, to be honest with you. And the same thing with Val. You can't Google things with Val's mother or, who, or uh, Val's grandmother. It's not public information that she had a fall or that, you know, she was moved into assisted living and that her family couldn't take care of her. So, you know, what I'm telling you is, is specific information, especially with the fact that your family tried to get him to doctors and tried to get him to different places. I don't know if that's part of your story or not, because I don't know what your story is. But I know that your brother's telling me this. And the whole thing is, is that I don't expect anyone to believe me or take my word for it. But what I do hope is that you do take your brother's word for it because he is here every day and he is with you. And that's why, you know, I do what I do to help people like you, to let you know that your brother is on the other side because 
he tells me that, you know, your family still is upset with this. And he tells me that your family is still upset, whether, you know, wondering whether or not he is at peace, whether or not he is on the other side, because he went through so much turmoil here in this world. And this is his way of letting you know that I am here and I am at peace and I am fine because he's acknowledging that. And he's also apologizing to you because he says to me that you were the one that had to step forward and to really take care of the family and to help keep the family together after his passing. And that's something that nobody talks about, but your brother is. And he says to me that he's sorry because, you know, your family was so upset over this that they really couldn't see a lot of the accomplishments or a lot of the things in your life because they were so upset and so focused on how your brother had died. But he's coming through and letting you know that the first thing that he's acknowledging is about how proud he is of you. And second of all, letting you know, thank you for taking care of the family and thank you for holding on to the honor the way that you did of me. Because he's bringing that through. A lot of truth in that. I was definitely, as Val knows, I was definitely the glue after that happened, but it took many, many years to try to work through that. Now you're a third generation psychic medium. So grand grandmother, mother, and you, and then your dad is skeptic. My dad all. is like you, Ryan. <laughs> No, I, I'm, I'm a believer. I just know that there's, there's people that are, that are legit. And then, of course, in anything, there's people that are trying to get money. Well, let me tell you something. I didn't get a TV show by being wrong or not being legit. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of this TV show, I can't wait to talk about this with you. Meet the Frasers. And it's your whole family. You hire them to work for you. Yes. I've seen some of the clips and I think it's hilarious. Your mother and you and your sister and your dad, just all the different dynamics between the two. Your mother dotes over you. She's a helicopter mom. Your sister's like, whatever. Typical brother, sister relationship, right? And then your dad's like, I don't get it. You guys have got the perfect chemistry for a reality show. Well, that's what we were told. I mean, it was crazy because one day, you know, uh, I got a call from MGM and they were like, you know, we found out about you. We want to, you know, come down and want to meet you. And the next thing you know, cameras were here filming a show and that's how it happens. And to be honest with you, I can't believe the things that go on in our family. Like I'm literally the only normal one and I see dead people. So you tell <laughs> me what that's like. And we can't forget about your now fiance, Alexis. Yes. And then you factor her in and then she's got the demands on you for the wedding. And you're just like, hold up, that's my job. Oh yeah. And we live in the small state of Rhode Island, which is even crazier. So, you know, I have, we have three Bengal cats that are here in the house with us that are, you know, running around like crazy. We have two Italian overbearing mothers that like are always up our rear end. You need, you need like tongs to pull them out. That's how far up there they are. And then you have Alexa, who's actually a pageant queen. Alexa was Miss Rhode Island uh, Teen USA. And this year, well, in the series, what you'll see is she's actually running for uh, the crown again of being Miss Rhode Island. Mm. Mm. And who's the better dresser between the two of you? Oh, we always match. We always match all the time. <laughs> Whose idea time is that? Day. Yours? Huh? Whose idea is that? Well, it's about both of us. Me and Alexa are really like the same person, kind of. Like, I, I dress up, she dresses up. We always want to make sure that, you know, we match one another. That's so cute. <laughs> Although I don't think this, this is just for you today, Val. This is for you and Ryan. I don't oh. think it's should do something like this. Honey, though. you can't wear that again, just so you know. So I think you should just go on and put it in a box and send it to Chicago so I can wear it on Windy City Live. But wait a minute. It's on, it's on the cover of my book now. That's why I wore it. Ah! It's on the cover of the book. <laughs> it's perfect. It. Now, in the book, are people going to find out how to channel their psychic medium abilities? Can anybody do this? Does everybody have an, a talent? So everybody has a way to connect with their loved ones. You know, they speak to us in many different ways. They speak to us using signs. They speak to us through our dreams. They speak to us through feelings. They even speak to us through, you know, mediums and psychics. But the thing is, is that you have to learn how to connect with them yourself. So I do talk about ways to tap into your own psychic ability and your own intuition, but I can't teach everybody to see and hear dead people. I don't even know how I do it, to be honest with you. But I can teach you to recognize the signs because it's really like learning a language with the other side. Even, you know, the same way that we're learning new words still here and today, you know, sometimes we have to look things up in the dictionary. It's the same thing with com communicating with those in spirit. We have to learn how they're communicating with them. Excuse me, we have to learn how they're communicating with us, why they're communicating with us. And more importantly, the more that we learn to communicate with them, they also learn to communicate with us, which is really cool. All right, I got one last question here. I always look at the clock at 11.11, always. I always tell Val, it's 11.11, always. Like, I see it on, everywhere. I see it on movies and I've Googled it and it talks about it being a spirit number. What does 11.11 mean to you? 
So a lot of people see 1111, and I love that you're seeing that because 1111 is the first step that the universe is using to try to get your attention and to open the door of communicating with you. So when you start to see 1111, what they're really doing is saying, hey, there's something going on. Hey, we're trying to get in touch with you. Hey, we're here. And they're hoping that you'll pay attention to it because anytime things repeat within your life, like I don't believe in coincidences. I mean, coincidences just don't happen, at least not in my world anyway. So anytime that you keep seeing things, whether it be in you know, the repeating numbers like 1111, repeating times on a, on a clock, a, the same song that your dad used to sing to you that you're hearing everywhere is really the first steps that your loved ones are using to communicate with you. And then when you start to embrace it, Sorry. when you start, that's okay. Your loved you one's start, trying to communicate with you, Val. <laughs> I know, and I thought I had it off. I don't want to hear from them. <laughs> when you start to embrace it and when you start to look deeper into it, then next thing you know, that opens the door to them being able to send you messages. Mm, I love it. Okay, I like that. I'm going to keep, uh, keep my eye out for that. Yeah, that, I know somebody who always sees 444. Same thing. Always Same thing. sees numbers 444. Mm. It could uh, be anything. It doesn't have to be 1111. It could be a birthday. Like I said, it could be a repeating song. It could be a repeating license plate that you keep seeing. I mean, the signs come in so many different ways. Some people see dragonflies. Some people see butterflies. Some people see, you know, uh, different, different clouds in the sky that, you know, mean something to them. It's amazing how spirit will find a way to reach you and connect with you and deliver it to you their own message. You just have to be open to it. Well, Matt, thank you so much for chatting with us today. And whenever you're in Chicago, when we get on the other side of this pandemic, yeah. <laughs> come visit us live in studio. We'd love to have you there. Sounds good. Thank you so much for having me with you today. Of thank course. You, Matt. And make sure you check out Meet the Frasers and Matt's new book, When Heaven Calls, Life Lessons from America's Top Psychic Medium. And of course, you can see this full unedited interview on our YouTube page. We'll be right back, everybody. <laughs>